Hey guys, welcome back to Mixed Media Sour, a channel created for you by you. I am your host, Ron McBride, and today we're going to be talking about how to use Google Docs to design a website. Just kidding. Actually, um, today we're going to go over how to design a website, uh, specifically a one-page design website, which has become very popular in the uh, recent years due to the fact of mobile devices like tablets and phones. Everyone's very used to scrolling. I think in the early stages of design, um, you know, it was very important to keep all your information within that one frame, you know, as soon as they hit that page. But now it's become very usual for people to actually scroll through a page. So we're going to pretty much focus on that particular style of website, okay? And really the focus is I want to take you guys through just a, a brief introduction into how the designing process would work, okay? So we would start off with uh, planning and research, then we would go into design, and then we would go into building and then testing, and then depending on how things go on the test, we might go back to the building stage, we might go back to the design stage. But in the beginning, you want to definitely make sure that you have a good plan, you understand the goals of the website, what the stakeholders would like out of the website, or uh, and when I say stakeholders, I mean the people who actually uh, are using the website to achieve a specific goal, okay? And then also, um, you want to look at designing a website from the user's perspective of how they can achieve their goal when they reach the website, you know, how do they get to the information they're looking for right away as quickly as possible, okay? So I created this uh, scenario today where um, I have a client who is a, a couple and they're getting married, okay, and they want to create a website to support the announcement of their marriage and get people to go to the website and RSVP because you know, they're going to send out cards, but they don't want to have to go back and tally the cards, and they want to be able to send out an email to everybody who RSVPs because, you know, email is the way that everyone's communicating and everyone's pretty much comfortable with it. I mean, I mean, my, uh, uh, my wife's grandmother is actually emailing and, you know, and Twitter and she's on Instagram. It's, it's, it's crazy. So um, it's become very normal and it's become the norm. So they've come to me and they kind of want this website. So it's my job to find out and your job to find out from your clients um, what is the goal, the specific needs of their website. Okay, so I gave you the overarching goal. So this is how a conversation may actually go. Okay, so I have a little file here set up and basically this is me taking notes. Now you could be taking notes on a piece of paper, you could be, you know, have your, uh, your, uh, your uh, uh, notepad open, you could have what whatever just a way to capture the information that's being given to you during this conversation okay so the client says to me um uh they want a header okay they want a big image they say that you know when they go to the website we want them to see the announcement that we're getting married and a picture of us we have some pictures that we got from the engagement shoot that we did with our photographer and we'd actually like to have like a little gallery information Okay, and I said, oh, okay, that's that that sounds great. So I'm writing this information down. Okay, um, then they say, you know, we'd love to have a, you know a countdown for our big day. It'd be great for everyone to you know kind of get really excited about the day coming up. And at the same time, it's another way for us to actually open up the website every time we open it up and kind of be a, a reminder to us of how many days we have left. Okay, so um, I said that's great. Okay, so we need a counter. Okay, so. Um, she starts telling me about, you know, their story of, you know, how we met, you know, our first date, you know, and then like, you know, when he proposed and stuff. So these are all pieces of content that'll, you know, be on their website, you know, that would be interesting to their, their audience, their family, who is the audience in this case. Okay. And friends. Um, also, you know, as she's telling me this story, you know, you know, she was saying, you know, when I met Calvin, there was this great song that was playing and, uh, you know, and when he proposed to me that he, you know, had that song playing too at the same time. So it was like, okay, this song is a very, very much a part of their story. So this, you know, has to be incorporated into the website some way or another. Okay. So, um, I'll put a bullet point for that. Um, of course, all the important information needs to be on a web, on this website about the ceremony, about the reception, you know, the date, the time, the place, 
um, directions. Okay, and then the big, the big thing um, that they wanted, the big piece of functionality that they want on the website is for people to be able to RSVP through the website. Okay, so now that uh, that means that I need to have some sort of form that's in there. Okay, so they need names, emails. Um, number of guests that are going, if, you know, if, if they're going or if they're not going to be able to to go, okay. Um, and then um, they have a registry, okay. So they have a few stores that they register at where people can get gifts for you know for them from the wedding. So I have to have some sort of links there. And because she says her family is very big into social media and that they tweet and they use Facebook and Instagram, we definitely want to tie into those things as well too. And, um, and then I, you know, advise maybe you want to have a couple of quotes or something just as filler within the site, you know, things that you know, mean something to them, basically, to her and Calvin, okay? And then, of course, a gallery. Now, the gallery, um, I might actually take this and actually move it up here in the header, okay? So that's very important. That needs to be a top level to the top level item okay and these things can move around okay so that's basically um you know me collecting information for the website okay so then we move into the next stage where it's kind of in between this stage and designing and it's part of design but it's also part of the research okay and it's called wireframing okay so you want to wireframe the website and the idea um of what, the, the way that you want to wireframe something is basically you 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 want to omit all um, distractions of like color and font choices or whatever. We want to kind of take the information she's given us and kind of lay it out in a logical format that would relate to how the final design may look. Okay, so with the wireframe, if, if we look at the top, you know, I definitely want this uh, big image in the background. You know, Emily and Calvin's name up there that they're getting married. You know, it's the first thing that someone sees when they go to the website. Um, maybe a link to the gallery is there from their their engagement. Um, a menu at the top of some sort. Okay, I know I said this is a one-page site, but the menu at the top, if you click, you would be using, um, a coder would be using what is called a uh, uh, anchor point, anchor link. So that link would actually scroll the page to the various business. So if I said our site, it would scroll the page up to our site section. Okay, so that's how that particular menu would work. If it were a different type of website, it would go to a different page, but we're doing a one page website. Okay, so our story. So there's a date here, maybe a little blurb of content, you know, um, maybe that's when they first met, you know, blurb here, another piece of uh, content here. Maybe that's, uh, you know, I think when she was talking about um, their first date, you know, when he proposed, Okay, so there's a date and there's a blurb of information there. Um, the part where she was talking about our song, well, right here, um, I put a little indication of like some sort of media player there. It's not something that I would, you know, have play right off of default. I think that was one of the things that annoyed people the most is going to a website and having, you know, from a usability standpoint, having a song play right away. But having a player gives them you know, the uh, the ability to be able to go and play the song when they're ready. And, you know, it's a piece of media content that's on the, that enriches the website at the same time. A couple of images here, um, a couple more images representing the ceremony and the reception, uh, the date, location, and directions, um, the RSVP box. So I knew that I had to have some sort of subscription box to, um, you know, for the user, the visitor, to be able to put in their RSVP information here. And uh, whether attending or not attending, number of guests, all those things that we were asking here in this little light outline is being represented here. The uh, gift registry, you know, I have three images. Those would be linked, li linked images to those registries. And then down here, um, the social media uh, plugins, you know, links to those things here. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and then, you know, a little blurb or, or a quote down here as well too okay so that's basically wireframing and wireframing this this is a very simple site but there's no difference in how you would wireframe this type of site as you would a larger corporate site okay so it's all about planning and it's all about putting 
um, boxes of where information may go and get an idea of the flow. You, they used to do the same thing with, you know, um, boxes and like kind of like diagrams to do like the navigation. But this takes it to another level because there's navigation functionality, and at the same time, you have an idea of content and how much space a, a piece of content may make. Okay, so wireframing is very, um, very important. It's, it's fast, it's fluent, I can make changes on this very quickly, um, and um, you know, I can make changes very quickly, and at the same time, uh, this could be something on a larger project where if you have the bare bone structure of where things are, and this is going through an approval process, and you take this back to your, you know, to the client, or you know, whoever the stakeholder is, and we could be making some changes here, the structure is already there. It's there enough. If this has been approved to this particular level and I'm focused on, you know, like getting the images from it or getting content, this could be actually handed over to the designer if I'm not the, I'm not the designer, but the developer, if I'm not the developer as well as the designer, which sometimes could end up being the case. Um, but if a developer is working, working on this, this design could also already be uh, programmed from their, their end. So they could be programming in tandem and building this out in tandem while I'm getting all this other information and changing um, uh, certain information that's on the page. And making changes for them, it's a little bit easier because we're talking about blocks of information. So if they say, hey, I want the ceremony and reception to be up here, it's a little bit easier to move that block of information up here. Now, this design, I based it on what is called a 12... Um, 12 column grid from the 96 grid system. If you're not familiar with that, you definitely want to go head on over to 960, uh, 960.gs, excuse me. It's a 960.gs. And <clears throat> there's a lot of information about this grid system. It's a great system for um, basically streamlining the development process. And um, you can basically use the uh, the dimensions that are used in this are easily divisible so as far as from a coder standpoint it makes it easier for them to kind of separate the, the website but there's more detail about that and i'll provide some more detail about that in the links below okay so going back here so i based this on this system it also is very uh, uh very useful to me in laying out the information on the page it, it keeps it in organized fashion and for a designer what's important is the fact that from here to here it's about 940 pixels the other um, uh, 40 pixels 20 on each side there actually come from uh, excuse me uh, 10 from uh, 10 on each side actually come from the padding that goes between the browser and what you're seeing so basically I'm designing for the people on a resolution of uh, uh, 1024 and so basically this makes sure that everything all the important information lands in the middle of that in the middle of that screen so you see between these columns here all that information is going to land right in the middle of their screen and not fall out so there won't be any right or left scrolling okay so that's important and also this is also very important to use a system if um if your website's going to be responsive and what i mean by responsive is if you head on over to um, my site, mixedmediasalad.com, you will see that my site is actually a responsive site. So if you scale it down to the size of you know how somebody may use it, uh, may view it on a web device like a, you know a tablet or a cell phone it scales basically to that site so that's what it means to be responsive so if you ever hear that word it's responsive design that's what it is you see at full size this is how it fits within a um, within a regular desktop okay so let's go back here now Lastly, I'm just going to show you really quickly here, guys, now that this website is done, what it would look like in its finished state or one of the possible designs here. So this is the website. This is that same little layout that I had that was all just gray boxes that didn't look very interesting. Now I've incorporated design. I have typography in here. You know, I have, um, you know, color 
you know, but as far as the layout, it's all it's all pretty much the same. And we could actually compare those two here. If I go up here um, in Affinity Designer and I do view, no, I think it's a window separate mode. OK, so let's take this, move this over here. We can close that one out like this. And I'm just going to scale these down so you guys can kind of see. could see if we compare the two Let me scale this up a little bit yeah so if you compare the two here's my big header uh, background image here um, here's my little gallery button here um, you could see there's uh, our story those three blocks of text I have little hearts instead I mean these are all graphical elements I have the images you know I had the uh, titles on the top here in the ceremony and reception um, here they're actually in it I made you know that those are design design decisions that I'm making and of course then we have that input box to RSVP we have our three images here now doesn't this looks like a lot more rich in information here you know actually there wasn't any text here but you know we got a quote in there and we got a quote down in here too just to kind of set the tone and the mood of the site um, I don't have a back to the top button but if you uh, in the final design I click if I made a back to the top button here so when you click on it it would automatically scroll back to the top on the website okay so that's pretty much designing a website in affinity designer um, oh one more thing Let's see, if I go back, let's go back, let's get out of separate mode here, and let's go to full screen. Um, one of the things that the gallery, I want to show a little bit of functionality. I have a layer that's turned off here, but for the gallery, when you click on view engagement gallery, the functionality would be basically a, this pop-up. Uh, where's my pop-up? here somewhere well that's odd huh well I did have a, a design for a pop-up and you can actually see it here oh well it's working here that's fine but anyway so the gallery pop-up is here so I showed it here in the wireframe um, you know that there would be some sort of pop-up um, let's try this again here I don't know for some reason, I might have missed something. Gallery, here it is. So here's the pop-up that I was talking about. All right, so that would actually pop up above. Let's just move this in the chain here, above everything else. OK, so that's basically it, guys. I just wanted to show you that. That's designing a website in Affinity Designer uh, using uh, just notes to grab the content creating a wireframe, and then finally, um, you know, designing the website. If you have any other questions, please feel free to uh, send me an email. If you found this useful, leave me a comment definitely below. And if you want to look for uh, more training from me, you can actually head on over to my website, MixedMediaSalad.com, and you'll see uh, there's some training on how to use Affinity Designer. Okay, thanks again, guys, for watching, and we'll catch you next week where I will actually cover... Um, scrapbooking hopefully I was supposed to do that this week but my computer ran into some problems and you know life gets in the way so you know how that is but I'm glad I was able to get this video out to you guys uh, this week so thanks for your support and we'll catch you next week if you like this video make sure you subscribe and if you want to receive 50% off my training make sure you sign up at mixedmediasalad.com